Hi, welcome to our presentation. I am Felicia. I was designated the team leader. We are introducing a fragrance to you today. It is Wild in Nature, so I'm going to start by giving our mission statement. Our mission statement, Wild in Nature aims to provide artisanal dual gender fragrances that are made in San Francisco. So our group is actually compiled of four different groups. We have the nose, we have the design team, sales and distribution, and PR and marketing. Um, everyone, you'll see their talents are reflected in the groups that they were in. And it's going to be roughly like 20 to 22 minutes. So hang in there with us for the whole presentation, please. So now I'm going to talk about the demographics. Our target market is 25 to 35. Obviously, as I stated earlier, it's male and female because we really saw a white space in that market and we decided that we could be successful as a fragrance if we went with that target market specifically. Um, the income is 60 to 85,000 and just the lifestyle, they are very quirky, they're young, they're technical, they're professionals, they enjoy outdoors, they're fun overall. And next up, Hamilton is going to discuss the nose. So we actually took a rather unique approach. Uh, we actually started with a name, which is interesting. So we started with Wild in Nature, and we really wanted to ground that in something real. So because all of us go to school here in San Francisco, we wanted to ground it in something in, that was truly San Franciscan and part of the San Francisco student experience. So we actually found an inspiration with Mere Woods. Um, not just the, the physical aspects and physical attributes of Mere Woods, but the experience of being in there with your friends. There's a section of the Mere Woods called the Cathedrals where you're supposed to be very quiet and very respectful of the nature space. But um, me, I can't help but be a little loud and to laugh whenever someone tells me to be quiet. So the scent is supposed to really evoke that memory of kind of laughter throughout the cathedrals in Mere Woods. Uh, we actually took some of the notes that we had, because uh, we've presented this a few times in, during our scent development. So we took on quite a few of the notes that, that were given to us. The photo that you see behind me is actually a part of our process. I was using mixing different soaps, different teas, different essential oils just in, in my apartment in Soma to just kind of create and develop the fragrance. So through that, every single week, I'd come to class with 20 or so different fragrances, and I'd present that to both my classmates and different presenters that we had. Based on some feedback that we, had, uh, that we got from different presenters, we wound up with this fragrance that we have now. So it's actually a combination of bergamot, ylang ylang, and cedar wood. So we wanted to take some of the notes that we got from you initially, Patrick, and bring a little bit more wild aspect, which is why we included bergamot uh, into the fragrance to just add a little bit of zeal. And then also, uh, one of the notes that you provided for us was having it be a little bit cleaner, having that be a little bit more universal, which is why we incorporated the, uh, a little bit more of the ylang ylang. The cedar wood actually came from trying to ground it within mere woods. And one of the comments that we got from one of the perfumers uh, locally in town, Antonia, was she was missing uh, a little bit more of the heavy cedar. So we amped up the cedar wood to really reflect that uh, within our fragrance. Now uh, I'm going to introduce our design team that's going to talk about our bottle and packaging and logo designs. Uh, hi, uh, we are the design team. My name is Cami. And right now I'm going to talk about my price, which is the logo design. And when I designed the Wild and Nature Fragrance, the logo, so I asked myself, how can I design the logo which can present the company's image and keep, can give the public have think about, oh, when they see the logo, they can think about, oh, it's a Wild and Nature Fragrance. So I get, I get in some information about the wild and nature's images, which is the tree, uh, beaches, and the sound wood image. And the first, after that, I get the image, I start to sketch the, the logos. And this is the first week I sketched the logo, which is use the brush, the, the, the paint brush, and giving the feeling and the texture of the wild, wild feeling. And at ne next one is use the simple stroke and use the the line of doing the wild in nature, and when you upside down is the, the mountain shape. And after that, I also keep doing the sketches, and during the first the sketching, my, my classmate gave me the feedback, is which they like the first, the, the, the second one, which is the stroke one, simple one. And after that, I designed the second sketches, 
Here I add some color and also have different sound shape and combine W and N. And after that, I also use the M emphasis and combine the W and N. Between the W and N, I use the emphasis, the top, the circle one, and combine to together. And after that, after the one month, the sketch and give some feedback from the classmate. This is the three first, the, the logo design. And first one you can see here is the uh, use the shadow here and make uh, the, the wild, wild nature logo. And second one is inspired by the geometric mountain. And third one is use the emphasis, which is the classmate pick out the first week. But I, I use the different color to divide the W and M. And after that, uh, during the sketches and the, the conceptualizing, and our classmates decided to use the third one, which is the really simple one. And I just use the one color because I want to just use really simple. And the, this is the first one the, the use the mountain shape. When you upside down, it's a mountain shape. And the, after that, you can see the W is down there, and the emphasis is the top side there, and the N is also here. And now I'm going to give the Johnny going to talk about the bottle of the design. Hi, uh, my name is Johnny. I will introduce butter and packaging design. Uh, the design for the butter was inspired by the tree in Redwood Park. To reflect our sense inspiration, we decided to design the butter to contain the essence of the meals. This is our uh, initial sketch of the butter. Um, I designed the butter. It looks a uh, trunk shape of the tree. I then made a graphic model of the sketch. Um, the top and bottom, bottom of the butter incorporate the wooden of the tree. My team's feedback on this design was to, it, it was too masculine, and that is straight from the idea of the fragrance bottle. So I went back to the idea sketch. I've come up with the different style of the bottle shape. Uh, it ranging from the rectangular bottle and yeah, to bottle to the unique bottle shape. Aside, aside from the rectangular bottle, I felt that the other was too feminine and we wanted to have a gender neutral stand. So I made a graphic model of the bottle um, I thought was most fitting. However, the bottle still looked uh, is too masculine because due to overused wooden theme. I took up the wooden outline of the bottle, made the bottle more thinner and longer. The body of the bottle will be made out of clear glass and the cap will be designed to look the wooden. This is uh, our final design for the bottle with the logo included. And we also decided to reduce size of the bottle to 50 ml. And I included a design for the packaging. On, it is um, a fade image with the strip wooden, strip wooden texture on the bottom. Okay, uh, this has been the bottle and packaging design. And she, Rachel, will introduce next part of bottle development. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm going to talk about the internal design. Before design, I searched online and uh, I found these uh, inspirational images. Um, I thought making the internal stuff with the boy is a better way to show the wider nature. In the beginning, I um, put a coral inside, but the coral looks a little bit feminine, and that cannot match our unisex target market. So I changed it to a shrub. However, that one looks ordinary. Uh, finally, I chose cinder. Cinder is a white and a white plant which uh, grows in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so I combined the cinder with Johnny's bottom together to get our final fragrant bottom. And I also made the display. I use very uh, simple element and a clean shape to decorate. And I chose the background images for mirror wood um, that makes the whole display more earthy. Next, Hamilton will introduce the cost of the bottle. So when we gave our little mini presentations, they said, that is lovely, but how does this really work in the real world? Uh, so we were really charged to um, be a real company and figure out the real cost of production. So after researching the cost it would take to actually make the juice in large quantities and take it down, 
as well as the uh, cost of true bottles and box production, we realized for an initial launch, we'd want to go with a pre-made bottle and a box that we could print and then actually construct ourselves. So that's uh, what influenced our cost of production. The one thing we really wanted to keep unique and special was the bottle topper. Being able to use natural reclaimed red cedar wood um, that will hopefully uh, reclaim from mere woods and actually carve that out and to be a nice special part of our pre-made bottle. So our initial cost of production is $15.54. We wanted to mark that up just a little bit just for different incidentals and uh, to have a little bit of money for PR and marketing hopefully for next season. So our wholesale cost would be $40 and we would retail at $95 and that'd be for a 50 milliliter bottle. I'm now going to call up our sales and distribution team to talk about where we're going to sell our fragrance. Hi, my name is Tina. Hi, I'm Anna. And we're part of the sales and distribution team. And to start out, we decided to choose local, locally owned small boutiques rather than uh, large chain retailers due to the lack of competition. So our first district is North Beach and Financial District, which is the most, uh, most densely populated shopping district, where we include an urban sidewalk, which is a boutique with locally designed and purchased products with a unique and hipster style. And the second boutique is Iron and Reason, which is a menswear store with locally crafted and printed products. And we also included Shop 657, which is a store opened by Academy of Art students. And the second district is Mission, which is a shopping district with a variety of hipster boutique, where we included Belgier, which is a vintage and modern women's clothing, accessories, home decor, and beauty product store, and Mass and & Stacks, which is a menswear boutique, including modern styles and tailoring. And the third district is Hayes Valley, which is a top shopping district with stylish and trendy fashion boutiques, and we included Azalea, which is a men's and women's and men's boutique that is well-known and will attract a larger audience and um, paired off with Welcome Stranger, which is a menswear store partnered with Azalea. And the fourth district is Fillmore and Pacific Heights, which is known for high fashion and stylish shops with hip, hip and trendy designs. We've included Rudy, which, uh, has, which creates unique ready-to-wear products and designs and is chic and modern and Revolver, which is a multi-brand men's and women's store with casual with a mix of modern and hipster. And next up, we have Anna to discuss the three other districts. I'm going to talk about another three districts in the Bay Areas. Uh, the first district is Marina. Uh, Marina is a popular and lovely area for shoppers due to their hips and trendy selection. And the first boutique that I choose in the Marina is Mingo. Uh, Mingo's products are often designed from the local designers from local fashion schools. And uh, its style is very similar to white and nature target customer. And the second store we have is Marine Layers. Uh, Marine Layers is very famous uh, for their modern and high quality colorful styles and it is really a pure our perfume customer base. And the second district uh, I'm going to talk about is Berkeley. Berkeley is a small city in the East Bay area and uh, it is, its hipper styles in town is very well known. And uh, the first store I'm going to talk is Stella Studio. Uh, Stella Studio always held trunk show or special events to show their collection. And it is a great place for us to distribute our perfume to attract customers' attention. And uh, the second store is Urbanity Styles. Urbanity Style procure and uh, resell designers and luxury labels, which have been collected or created by women in our community. And the third district, the last district is South Salito. South Salito is considered as a popular shopping tourist destination and it includes a lot of unique and small fashion decorations, fashion boutiques. And uh, the first store is Girardano. Girardano's appeals to women who like to wear unique but uh, portable styles. White and Nature is limited perfume. They have the same market stra strategy. And the last door is Out of Hand. Out of Hand is a handcrafted gift accessories and woman clothing stores. And uh, White and Nature is also can be viewed as a great gift for both genders. Hi everyone, I'm Amy and this is AB. We are the PR marketing team. I will start off with the marketing portion. Um, starting up, 
Our marketing strategy is really to spend as little as possible toward advertising our fragrance. So we've decided that we're going to pitch a launch story to select lifestyle websites. We've chosen the San Francisco-based 7x7 online magazine. About 72% of their readers say that this is their go-to source for fashion and lifestyle information. Another similar website is Refinery29. They have about 1.9 million email subscribers. What's really great about these websites is that they're kind of fun, they're a little bit hip, and they're also a little bit quirky, and that's really in tune with our product's target market. We're also going to take advantage of the Academy's newspaper because it's sent to about 250,000 homes here, which is really great for us. And of course, we'll be utilizing the Fashion School's daily blog. We're also going to be very active on social media. I mean, you have to be these days. Um, it's such a fun, easy, and very effective way of reaching a much broader target audience. And best of all, it's free for us. And of course, we have to have a website. People have to have a place to go to to learn more about us. What's really great about our website is that when you're in our homepage, you're greeted by a video that um, really captures that element of wild nature. So we're going to go ahead and show you that video. It's about 50 seconds in length. Okay, so I feel like after watching this video, it really kind of generates a certain level of curiosity. It kind of makes me wonder, ooh, what does wild in nature smell like? Maybe I should buy a sample bottle of it. So as a promotional effort for anyone who does purchase that sample bottle, we're offering them a 10% off coupon toward a purchase of a full-size bottle within a limited time frame from their initial purchase. And now I'm going to pass it to AB to continue with our PR. We created a San Francisco map to act as an interactive marketing strategy. We want to focus on San Francisco to appeal to our local target demographic. Uh, the map also shows stores that we will be distributing to. To add value for the users, we've highlighted essential places and popular outdoor activities that people can enjoy. This, this concept is rooted in Wild and Nature's local foundation and targeted at its widest audience by appealing to their interests. Another piece to parties will include a launch party that promote our fragrance. To stay economically efficient, our first launch event will be Shop 657 at Academy of Art University, which possesses as an accessible and affordable location. A follow-up event will be held at Stella and Dot, a San Francisco-based jewelry and accessory company. They often open to, uh, their shops to parties in order to collaborate with their um, with local startup companies. So fashion accessories are one of the biggest market of fashion, so working together will bring synergy. In playing in favor of our desired demographic, our final event will be a pop-up shop in a truck to distribute our fragrance. This is our unique and bold way of introducing fragrance line in intimate setting while getting feedback from customer. Lastly, we realize that the scale of perfume collector audience is huge, but they're hard, hard group to reach. So we will use famous bloggers and reviewers to get through to them. By having honest critique and endorsement of product, we can reach our customer in a more natural way. To finish up today, Felicia will be concluding our presentation with some final thoughts. 
Okay, so that was the juice of our presentation. Eh? You like that? Okay, it's thank great. you. And we really hope you enjoyed our presentation. It's we put great. a lot of work into it and um, a couple things. Our future plans for our line are to obviously expand and we do want to play on our San Francisco roots and create more fragrances that give you a sense of what California represents and what San Francisco is in the different districts. And we also want to take it across the U.S. And one of the things, Antonia, when we went to talk to her, she recommended us trying to get into some bigger fragrance stores. So we're aiming to get into Twisted Lily and the Scent Bar as well um, to kind of come back to what we learned. I think we all realized that the fragrance company is, is really hard. And we were glamorizing, I guess, the concept and the idea of it. And it's so much more work. And I think we all took something from that, that the end product is so, it's so simple. It looks so simple, but it's a lot more complicated. So like I said, we hope you enjoyed it. And did you have any questions? Ooh, any questions? I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I love the video. Um, I could just say that I, I'm missing the man in the video because okay. it's for men and women both. So, but I loved it. Okay. I thought it was great. Um, maybe he should have popped out of the water at the end or something. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was great. And um, I think the bottle is clean and simple, which I think it should be. And um, the smell is. Much better. <laughs> Much better. Um, I love the idea of the, uh, the wood top and repurposed wood. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure about the... Um, I'm different because I just think there's one thing missing a little bit. Okay. And I think that when it comes to perfume, it's um, something that is something that is, has sex appeal, that has, that you wear perfume to attract. And that's, I, I think everything is fantastic, but I'm not seeing that part. I'm not seeing the allure of that, a little bit. Okay. But, um, Did we amp it up a little bit? We really were trying to. You amped it up a little okay. bit. You amped it up a little bit. Okay. She had her leopard shorts on when she jumped <laughs> in the water, it was great. It was great, but I, you know, do you know what I mean? Okay, it, it, yeah. it becomes well. It is very San Francisco. See, I'm coming from a different point of view because I'm thinking about Paris. I'm thinking about New York, and I'm new to San Francisco, even though I grew up coming here. Um, it does have what's happening now, and maybe I'm a little old school, and I have to kind of get used to it. But um, I, I thought the presentation was great. I, I think it's it's. The smell has come a long way since last time. <laughs> and uh, my nose just recovered. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm kidding. But um, I love the bottle. And, but I have to say that I know it's for both male and female, but I think there should be something also that distinguishes that it's for male and female. Because you might think that it's for one and not the other. I don't know if I see that it, it's kind of saying both, you know? Mm -hmm. Because maybe it might be more female with the video because um, a guy might not want to wear something that says wild, but if it's, I don't know how to, I don't know, I'm rambling, but um, I, I think it's great. Maybe the wood colors can be different on the bottles. Okay. You know, or half the W can be one color, male and female. Okay. But I think the logo is great. Mm -hmm. I think the simplicity of the glass bottle clear is great. Um, maybe it can be a boy tree and a girl tree. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I thought the presentation was good. I thought it's good. And I think that, uh, but another thing too, Demographic. I see that there is one part of San Francisco that is a huge part of San Francisco, being that I'm part of that community, is the Castro. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any uh, inclusion of that. And um, I think that's a big part of San Francisco. 
and I think that male and female both. I mean, there's great stores in the Castro. There's Union Made, which is an incredible store, which would probably be very open to having the fragrance there, being that it's from San Francisco, and especially the way it looks, the bottle with the wood top. Um, other than that, I, I, I thought it was great. I hope I wasn't too harsh. Also, one more thing, press. <laughs> I didn't see the San Francisco Chronicle. That's an institution in San Francisco. Carolyn Zinko does a style page. They have online. They, they have SF Gate. They do things and looking for things every, every day. They are a good source for this to have a story about the fragrance, to talk. It could be threefold. It could be about the first event at the Academy store. It could be about the uh, event at the other store. It could be something that you could let them know and they could just do blurbs. And you can you get triple your, your thing for it with the Chronicle. And everybody reads the Chronicle, especially online, and, you know, from old to young. And I, you know, I think that the fragrance, even though the demographic is there, but you know what, don't, don't make it just like that because I think it should be a San Francisco thing where everybody can wear it if they want to. That's all. Okay. We actually have a handout and a small bottle for you as okay. well. Just to thank you for coming Well, out. thank you. Ooh, that'll last me about one second. <laughs> <laughs> I like to spritz a lot on it. But, um, no, well, thank you. Thank you for letting me be part of your project and be part of this. And, and um, I think it's great. And I look forward to seeing it. And I, We're looking for investors. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't look here. <laughs> There's a lot of money in San Francisco. There's a lot. So um, you'll find it. You'll definitely find it. But I like the idea that you're already looking forward to expanding it from just the one fragrance. That's a good thing to look ahead because people get tired of things very quickly and they want something new constantly. So even though perfume, when it becomes like a staple to someone, and one thing I must say, if this becomes a huge success, which I hope it does, that Never get rid of the original fragrance. A lot of designers, as they have new designers come into different houses, I won't name them, well, I will name names, but like Yves Saint Laurent did a fragrance called Reeve Gauche. So now they brought it back because the designer that came into the house took the fragrance away because they felt it was outdated, but then it was an uproar. You always have to stick to your fragrance and always have the fragrance. Because people get used to wearing something, and when they get used to wearing this, they want to be able to get it. And promotion-wise, I think that, um, I think it's, you were talking about how you get the 10% the discount on, um, I'm not sure about that. I think it's interesting, but I, I, I'm not sure because it, it's, uh, the perfume is not inexpensive. Um, I think it could be more expensive than $95, probably. But um, perfume is a luxury. It really is a luxury, unless someone goes and buys it at, I, I, I won't name names either, but like at a drugstore or something, and they just get something like Jean de Tay Splash or something that's $19.95 but as a, as a fragrance. But I think people look at fragrance as a luxury. And I think that it should be Maybe rethink the idea of getting a discount on the next purchase. Maybe a gift with purchase is better. Because that's been a really big thing in the beauty industry. Me growing up, not in the beauty industry, but just buying beauty products. I think it started out with a company called Clinique. And they used to give gift with purchase, like a little like bag to keep your perfume in or something interesting that a man and woman can have. I think that would be better. Because people like that. Because people actually will buy the product if they like the gift that's going to be the product. They do like that. Plus, it'll be fun for you to design something, too. That's all. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay.